Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's video is part three of my user level security series. I'm going to teach you how to allow users to only view and edit the records that they themselves created in the database. This is the question that kicked it off. Landon from Wausau, Wisconsin. I hope I pronounced that right. One of my platinum members. Landon says, I've got three sales reps who use my database. Is there any way to keep it so they can only see their own customers and orders and not everyone in the system? I don't want to have to make them each their own database because I like to run reports based on everyone. Of course, Landon, in order to do this, you have to go through parts one and parts two of this series. Okay, you've got to set up the user level logons like we do in part one. In part two, you can control who can get into what. So as long as they can get into all the forms and reports, that's fine. But you want to prevent them from seeing other users' data. Okay, so we have to track which users own which particular records in whatever tables you want to control. All right, so it goes without saying, go watch part one first, where we set up the simple user level security. In part two, we control what users can open up what forms and reports. And in today's class, we'll set it up so that users can only view and edit their own records. Once again, as a disclaimer, this tutorial will show you security that is good enough to keep most users out of your database or out of the things that they're not supposed to see. However, an experienced access developer can bypass this logon routine. So to learn the best possible way to secure your database, I recommend my full Microsoft Access Security Seminar. More information on that at the end of the video. All right, so we got our database all set up from parts one and part two. I'm gonna log on, Richard and 599, oops, 599CD. All right, I'm logged on. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna remove that security that we put in the customer list form before. I think we put it in the form itself, right? Let's see what we got. Uh, okay, that's fine. And then the customer list, just to keep things easy for, for class, I'm gonna go in here and just pull this out. This form open report era event, we don't need it. Because usually if you're controlling what records the users can see, generally you don't need to worry about what forms and reports they get into because they're only gonna see their own records, right? The stuff that they created. Okay. Now for whichever tables you want to control what they can see, you have to put a user ID field in that table. So let's just do customers, right click design view in here put a user ID, that's gonna be a number of type long integer. That's a foreign key pointing to the user table, which is right here, okay? You're gonna put the user ID that this record belongs to in each customer, for example. And you can do the same thing with orders, order details, contacts, whatever you want. I'm just a new customers, you get the point, right? All right, uh, let's open up the customers and come in here and we got what 29 customers let's just give assign these all all these existing ones you got to assign them to the users manually the first time if you got a bunch of people in here you're just gonna have to go through and do it by hand unless you got like the sales reps name in there and you might be able to run an update query whatever i'm just going to assign like the first what eight customers to me and then we'll just make these two and then three and then four Oop. come on come on come on you get the point right all right so I got the first like eight customers. Okay, close it. Now, when the user logs on in the logon form, okay, we get their username in a temp var. All right, so we can hang on to it and use it later on. Let's also grab their user ID, which we looked up right here. So we know what that is because the user ID is how we can track what records they can view. So very similarly, we're gonna say temp vars user id we're creating a new temp var called user id equal oh, and i forgot to mention adam in the last temp vars video because he loves temp vars yes i know the full temp vars video is coming soon relax all right temp vars user id equals id that's just a value it's a it's a, a long integer so you can just set that right in the temp vars when you're doing text boxes you got to remember to say dot value okay save that so when the user logs on now i've got the username and the user's id in memory all right, I can use that anywhere in the database pretty much. Now, what you have to do is anywhere in the database where the user can open up a form or report that's gonna have lots of stuff in it, like the customer list, 
Right now I can see all 29 customers, okay? So I need to change this button so it applies a where condition. Where condition or filter doesn't really matter much. All right, right here, in fact, I'm gonna get rid of this on error resume next. Right here, we're gonna go comma, 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 and a where condition of where the user ID of that customer equals tempvar, tempvar's user ID. Okay. Now, I don't have a user ID yet in Tempfires because I logged on before we added that code. So save everything, close it, log back in. Richard, 599CD. All right, now the temp bar has been set in memory. If you want to display that on this form somewhere, you can, doesn't matter. Now watch this, when I open up customer list, look at that. I'm only seeing my eight customers because the button said only show it where the user ID equals, in my case, one, okay? The user ID field does not necessarily need to be on this form as long as it's in the underlying table or query. Now, one problem, one thing you'll notice is right down there, see the filtered thingy? Any user can just come in here and click and unfilter those results. So what you can do to prevent that is go to design view, go to the forms properties, find allow filters and set that to no. Save it, close it, and now when they open the form, look at that, they cannot turn the filter off. Okay, they can't use other filters on their own, like they can't filter by like, you know, uh, uh, you know, state or whatever, but it's a, it's a trade-off. Are there other ways you can do this? Yes, there are ways in code you can change the entire SQL statement behind the form. That's a lot more advanced. Again, this is simple user level security. I cover more advanced methods in my seminar. This is good enough for most people, okay? Now you also have to do that in any other forms where you can open up a customer. So for example, here I can open up James Kirk, right? By double clicking there, but I can also turn off the filter in this form. So any of these forms underneath, you also have to say allow filters as no. And once you do that, then the user will not be able to open up anybody else's customers. Okay? Can't turn that off. Stuck on number one here, record one of one, which is Malcolm Reynolds, which is one of my customers. Okay, got to do it in this button too, because that button opens up all the records in the form. So same thing, I'm going to steal the code out of this button. So right here, we can just put that there. We can put that there. Okay, and do whatever other, you know, uh, uh, forms and tables and stuff you have. Now, the only way I can get to orders in my database is by going through the customer form. Okay, so if I go to customer forms and I go to orders, right, I can unfilter that. So you got to make sure that you control this one too, right? You got to say allow filters as no. But now once you do that, you shouldn't have to modify the button at all because that button only opens up this customer's orders. You can't unfilter that. Same thing with contacts. You gotta do the same thing with contacts. Okay, I got everybody's contacts. Right click, design view, allow filters is no. Okay, any questions? Yes, you, back of the class, red shirt, beard. Go ahead, I'm just messing with you. Okay. One more thing, and that's adding new records, all right? If you wanna add a new record, come in here, hit the add new button. We need a way of at this point knowing who's adding this record, all right? So we have to add user ID to the form, but I don't wanna see it, so I'm gonna make it invisible, all right? Just copy one of these other fields, copy, paste, delete the label, all right? I'm gonna slide this over here. And open it up. We're gonna say this is going to be the user ID field and name. And it's not a currency. Okay. Its default value is going to be what? This is the nice thing about temp fires is you can use them here. You can use them in queries. You can use them in reports. You can use them everywhere. Well, almost everywhere. Equals temp vars user ID. Just like that. Here, I'll zoom in so you can see it better. Shift F2. Okay, equals temp vars user ID. And now I like to make these red too when they're hidden. Uh, that way I can see 
like when I go to design view, I know that's a hidden field. And how do we hide it? Go to format, visible, no. Save, close it, close it, open it. All right, let's add a new record. Uh, um, Harry Mud. All right, close it. And now if I open up my customer list, there's Harry Mud. And if I go check the customer table, down at the bottom, there he is. And let's make sure that ID is set. And yep, ID one. Okay. There you go. Do the same thing for contacts, orders, whatever else you want to track for each customer. And now when your users log in, they can only see and edit their records. Now, if you want to learn more in the extended cut for the members, here's what we're going to do. Instead of making it so that you can only see and edit your own records. We're going to make it so that all the sales reps can see everybody. They can see all the customers, see all the orders, whatever, but they can only edit their own customers. Okay. That way, you know, if a customer calls in and the, a different sales rep takes the call, they can still help the person and look up their order or whatever, but they just can't change things. Okay. Because some offices work differently. I know I get it. Then we're going to go through it's it's pretty easy to manage being able to edit or not. That's that's not a big deal. Deleting is a is can be complicated. So we're gonna check first of all only a sales rep can delete their own customer. You can't delete a customer if they have orders, right? If that customer's got orders in the system, you can't delete them. It, it creates an, an accounting problem. All right. Then of course we'll ask, are you sure you want to delete this person if they have no orders? And then we'll check to see if they've got contacts in the system where you talk to them, right? And if they've got contacts in their contact history, well, we can still delete them, but we just want to double check and say, are you, are you sure? Right? And if the user then still says yes, and they have no orders, and they said yes twice, then go ahead and we'll issue the SQL commands to delete all that stuff, and everybody's happy. Okay? That's covered in the extended cut. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos. There's hundreds of them now. And uh, gold members get to download pretty copies of these databases to take home for themselves. Uh, so check it out. And again, don't forget to check out my security seminar if you want to learn more about properly securing your database and locking it down. And that, my friends, is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really wanna learn access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. 
And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members, Get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered you'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.